Good evening, listeners. Welcome to your regular radio program, Let the Bible Speak. The program is sponsored by Church of Christ, meeting at number 5 or a street, high level Makodi. Shall we pray? Father and our God, in your hands, O oh God, we entrust our life. We thank you immensely for the grace. Thank you immensely for your love and kindness. Thank you for all the provisions and protections we have enjoyed of your hands. Father, this night as we study your word, we still want to give you all the honor and glory. Father, we have no power, no wisdom of our own. We have that directive. The Lord, the world have actually enveloped us with, uh, with falsehood. We ask thy grace, the Lord, by the hearing of this message tonight, that many will be delivered to you, Lord, from the power of darkness and be saved. Father, may you answer our prayer according to your will, for we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We will continue with the theme of our series, The Passion of the Cross. The Passion of the Cross. Today we'll be looking at Jesus' trial before Herod, King Herod. Jesus' trial before King Herod. And we will take our reading today from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 5 through 12. Luke, chapter 23, verse 5 through 12. But... They were the more fear, saying, He stare up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee to this place. When Pilate heard this, that he is from Galilee, he asked if this man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged to Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he had desired for a very long time to see him, because he had heard many things about him, and he hoped to see some miracle done by him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priest and the scribe stood and vehemently accused him. Then Herod with his men of war treated him with contempt, and mocked him, arrayed him in a gorgeous robes, and sent him back to Pilate. That very day, Pilate and Herod became friends with each other. For previously, they had been at enemy with uh, each other. Who is this Herod? Now, in the Bible, there are so many Herod. And remember that the word Herod is a title. Like the word Pharaoh is also a title. The word Caesar is a title. It's just like today you say governor. Governor is a title to somebody who is the number one citizen of a state. This Herod in question at this particular period in time, is the person we are going to talk about. But we are going to look at some of the heroes that the Bible have actually mentioned. Under the Roman uh, province, there are about a four number of heroes that we are going to look at. The first hero that we heard about is Herod the Great. Herod the Great reigned between 37 BC to 4 BC, and he ruled Judea under the Roman Empire. He is a non Jew from Edom. And he has a characteristic of being a very cruel leader. He has equally threatened the, the death of uh, Jesus Christ when he was born. This is the Herod the Great. But this Herod died before Jesus Christ matured. If you read the book of Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 through 17, we all know that when Jesus Christ was to be killed by this Herod at his tender age, the parents flew with him to Egypt. So that particular Herod died around 4 BC. Now, we have another Herod, Herod Achelaus. Herod Achelaus started his own reign from 3 BC to 18 AD. And uh, this particular Herod was in charge of Judea and Samaria and Indumia. He was the son of Herod the Great and he was disposed in AD 6. Now, Caesar Augustus, 
who is now the overall king in the Roman province, replaced him with another Jewish leader. Herod Antipas now came on board in BC 20 to AD 39, but he is the tetract of Galilee. He reigned in Galilee and uh, uh, Peria from 4 BC to AD 39. He was the one that John rebuked for taking his brother's wife, Philip. Now, we have another Herod, Herod Agrippa. Herod Agrippa is also another Herod that also ruled, but there are two Herod Agrippa, Herod Agrippa I and Herod Agrippa II. So he gave so much respect to the teaching of the Sadducees and the Pharisees alike. If you read the account of Acts of Apostles chapter 12, verse 1 through 3, you discover that this particular Herod in question is the one that uh, beheaded James. And he is the same Herod that also imprisoned Peter. Then Herod Agrippa II also reigned between AD 27 to AD 100. And he took over from Herod Agrippa I. So he ruled in the Palestinian region. And this was the Herod that Paul preached to. And there was one remarkable thing about this particular Herod in history. He is the one that told Paul, Paul, in a very short time, you think you are going to make me a Christian? Now, these are the number of heralds that the Bible mentioned. But the herald that we are interested in studying today is Herod Antipas. This is the herald that lived within the time that Jesus Christ was tried, when he was arrested by the Jews and taken to Pilate. This particular herald lived for a period of 59 years. The religious leaders who are the brain behind the accusation of Jesus Christ and his arrest being led before the trial judge, they were ready to follow Jesus Christ there and testify against him so that Jesus Christ would be found guilty to be crucified. But in all these cases that were seen, there is no case for Jesus Christ to answer. There is a remarkable court proceeding. He was referred to Herod by Pilate. Pilate and Herod were governors. Jesus Christ is from Galilee. Herod Antipas is ruling around Galilee region. Why Pilate is ruling in Jerusalem region? They are not the same uh, region within that country of the Israelites. Now that Pilate had been trying this man here in Jerusalem, and then he discovered that in the course of allegations that were brought against Jesus Christ, a reference was made to what? That Jesus Christ started his ministry from Galilee. There is a governor in Galilee now. Let him also hear this case with me. I should not be the only one that will now decide this man's case. That was why he made a reference that Jesus Christ should go and be, be, be taken to Herod Antipas for him to try him before he will sit, take, uh, now establish his verdict. Now that the incident that they have brought against Jesus Christ for now is now de being dealt with in Jerusalem. Because Jesus Christ has come down to Jerusalem for the Passover feast. And it was within that period that now he has been arrested. So Pilate wisely now said, let Jesus Christ be taken to where? to Galilee, where Herod Antipas is ruling, so that he can also lay the voice to the case of Jesus Christ before a final verdict can also be what established. Also, we're going to see what is the judgment of this man too. Note that a crime of any kind is first tried by a lower court before it's referred to what? To the upper court. And the judgment of each court has a reference point. It's either the upper court will decide to uphold judgment of the lower court or set it aside and establish a new judgment. So we are going to see how these two jurisdictions or court is going to play around in the case of Jesus' trial. Now look at Luke chapter 23 verse 7 through 15. If somebody commits a crime on the street, it is expected that people who have witnessed to the incident that occurred should take the person to the law enforcement agencies wherewith the person will be given opportunity to say a word before a verdict should be established. This is what the Jews were trying to play corner corner. But why would they not allow the trial judge to be able to establish the basic truth on the cases that they have accused Jesus Christ? These are the reasons why we say there are a lot of age justice that play around in the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, sometime a nation may not know how to corrupt a system. But when the people, the various group of people in the system, like the religious leader, the cultural leaders, are giving the government an opportunity, 
it will be possible for, for a government system to corrupt a society. Now, the government did not sit down and plan anything against the religion. But now the religious people are now bringing issues. Now, you can also understand that Christianity also is having problems within the government region today. Because ordinarily the Roman government do not have anything against the practice of religion of Christianity. Not until the Jews themselves were accusing those who practice Christianity against what they practice. Jesus Christ was not determined to be killed by the Roman Empire just like that. But the Jewish people were the ones that accused Jesus Christ. And you can see that the church is also suffering today because of many of the things that some dubious religious leaders have been accusing some of their religious men before the government that have been bringing the church into conflict of court matter. We are the enemy of ourselves, even as we try to play our Christian life today. Jesus is considered as an indigenous from Galilee. And so his case will now be tried in Galilee. Let us look at verse 6. When Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked if the man were a Galilean. See, this is the question. Because if he has been born and brought up in that region, why not? Then his case must be tried there by the person who has the power or jurisdiction over that particular region. Therefore, that was why Pilate referred Jesus Christ's case to what? To the foot of Herod, Herod Antipas, so that he can try Jesus as well. Herod was so happy that Jesus Christ was sent to him. And there are two fundamental reasons why he was happy. Now he longed to see Jesus Christ perform some miracles. So that by the time Jesus Christ now have come to his presence, he is trying to see whether Jesus Christ will actually perform some miracle. Then when he sees the miracle performed by Jesus Christ, he will be so happy. The second reason why he's so happy is that there were some rancors between him and Pilate. There was some misunderstanding between him and Pilate. And so now that Pilate had a case in his table, and he remembered that there is one particular person that also is important to hear the case. So having done that, he felt that that can be now an established point with which they can now reconcile and have a, a very good uh, relationship together. Now, Herod now asks Jesus Christ so many questions. But those questions were not actually specified. And the reason he was asking those questions is to provoke Jesus Christ to perform miracles. But Jesus Christ will not give him any miracle. Why? Even the devil himself wanted Jesus Christ to perform some miracle. Jesus Christ refused to do that. Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil. And the first temptation that he passed through was that he was asked to turn stone to bread. And Jesus Christ <laughs> refused to do that. He gave him a different answer because the reason for doing a thing was paramount to whatever anyone does. He was asked, if truly you are the son of God. And so if Jesus Christ might have turned those stones to bread, what are they going to be used for? For he has fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And therefore, by the time he sees the bread, he's going to eat them. And Jesus Christ said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So he refused to perform the miracle. He was asked to jump down from the, uh, the pinnacle of the temple. But Jesus Christ said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. If Jesus Christ actually jumped down from there, will anything happen to him? Nothing. Is it possible for Jesus Christ to turn stone to bread? Why not? How could Jesus Christ take five loaves of bread and two fishes and bless them? And the people in thousands ate and were filled and twelve baskets of remaining substance were picked from 5 to 12. Could you imagine that? So is it not it difficult for Jesus Christ to create something out of nothing? So he did not want to do it because he is not subject to obedience to the devil's command. So he cannot equally do a miracle for Herod in this scenario as well. Jesus Christ ceaselessly receive vehement accusation from all these people. The high priests, the scribes, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all of them team up. There is something that you need to understand in the religious realm of the Jews. The Sadducees, the Zealot, and the Pharisees have some level of disagreement that they cannot come together. They form a set within the same religion. 
the Pharisees have different belief system on the resurrection, and the Sadducees have different belief on resurrection. The Sadducees said, when somebody died, he can resurrect. But the Pharisees say, when somebody dies, there is no res res resurrection again. You die, you die, it, it, it ends there. The Sadducees believe and respect the Roman government as their leader. But the Pharisees will never believe that. So there is this dividing line among this religious set. But when it comes to accusing Jesus Christ so that he can die, each, each and every one of them have something against Jesus Christ. So now, those people that, that were in disagreement before now have come to team up so that they can accuse Jesus Christ to be killed. Let us look at Luke chapter 23 verse 10. In that passage, the Bible said, And the chief priest and the scribe stood and vehemently accused him. You see, why did they bring their names together? It's because this time around there is something that they don't like, and they now both would now agree to now allow Jesus Christ to die. Jesus Christ was treated with contempt by Herod and his soldiers. They tried to make caricature of him. They brought a robe. A robe, by this passage, is a kingly dress that at least befits somebody that is from a royal background. This was the kind of clothes that they took, and then they now wore Jesus Christ. Look at verse 11. Then Herod, with his men of war, treated him with contempt and mocked him with a gorgeous robe and sent him back to Pilate. By the time they might have done with Jesus Christ, when they are going to crucify him, they are going to use this robe that they have clothed Jesus Christ with on who is going to own it. They are going to part it and decide who will now own the cloth because it's a costly cloth. But they did not put, him, put it on him as a respect. They put it on him as a mockery. But then, <laughs> you can see how God can make a rich man to honor a poor man. So, in as much as they are now not accepting Jesus Christ as their king, but they are now addressing him like a king. So, it, in, invariably, they did, not, they did not want to, they, they, they cannot reject that the Jesus Christ is not their king. Because they have given him the, that honor. When he goes to Pilate again, they are going to further the same mockery by way of wearing him a crown of a king. But they are going to use thorns in this wise. But all of those things play around to say that Jesus Christ is their king. Now, according to Pilate, Herod did not find any fault to condemn Jesus Christ. And the two court vindicated Jesus Christ. But why would the Jews now raise a voice higher than the court? And as we all can be a witness, if the case is passed in the court, no matter the, the sound knowledge of a, of a lawyer who is defending somebody in a case or accusing the other party in a case, if the case go in favor of one um, uh, client in the court or the other, or we echo as the court pleases. So in this case, the court judge has passed the verdict on the case of Jesus Christ that he doesn't do anything that deserves death. Why would the Jews not say it as the court pleases? But instead, what did they say? They will be shouting, crucify him, crucify him. If you don't do this, you are not a friend of Caesar. Now, what can we learn in the trial before Herod Antipas for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ? Now, Jesus Christ said he has come to the earth for the purpose of truth, and people are deviating from the truth. So when does somebody have established a vivid truth about himself, why are we not ready to accommodate, to accept, to align with that same truth? Why do we argue around it? This is what happened in the life of Jesus Christ, and it will continue to happen until Christ comes back again. Jesus Christ did not bring fun to the earth, but rather the Lord's house so that people can understand how God can be honored in his house. But people will never turn the house of the Lord to be an honorable place because even when Jesus Christ tried to rebuke the religious leader of turning his father's house as a merchandise, the people would not find it funny. It was against their wishes and will. And therefore, they have to like do away with this man. 
so that it doesn't exist again. Now, Jesus Christ is a peacemaker. That's why he comes to the world. To so bring peace among men. But are we ready for peace? Consider the level at which people have actually created a lot of chaos, misunderstanding, fighting, differences here and there. There is no place that is peaceful anymore. In the home, in the offices, in the church, in the marketplace, every part, everybody is looking at each other with evil eyes. Then what is the place, where is the place of Jesus Christ in your life? And Jesus Christ has actually been denied of all of that, even when he has not deserved to die. They still make a lot of problems that he should be killed. Jesus has no fault, but received much accusation. So we should expect more in our own time today. You may not have done anything wrong, but people will come up to accuse you of a lot of things so that they can condemn you. Most of the times, we used to influence court judge so that they can de decide a case in our favor. But are you going to be free from the hands of God? Jesus Christ was declared to be condemned. But was he condemned in the hand of God? No. Likewise, even if the world have condemned you and God did not condemn you, you have a place of rest with God in eternity. For here, there are a lot of controversy that will take away your rightful place of judgment from you. But never mind. Because even the people that have judged you wrongly, they will not still live to enjoy the world forever. When the time shall come, God is still going to take their portion away from this earth. So it's momentary. But you have a better place hereafter. Your own case is better than their own. Though Jesus Christ received much accusation, but he treated most of those things with silence. But as for our own case, how many words have you uttered when people speak evil against you? Remember, no matter how many words that Jesus Christ speaks, that will not stop the people from going ahead to kill him. So he, instead of making noise, he reserved his own strength to himself. But for us, we talk so much. Are you going to be the one that will defend yourself when you stand up for the truth? It is the truth that you say. Not many words that will defend you. Stand by the truth. Today, do you want to give your life to God and have peace with Christ? Except you accept that Jesus Christ was unjustly treated for you so that you can receive justification before God, then your life is doomed. Until you give your life to Jesus Christ, that inside of you, the message of Jesus Christ will rule in your heart to direct your part of, of living as you will be doing a life that will not be pleasing to God Almighty. We are now inviting you to give your life to Jesus Christ as you have listened to this word, as you hear this word, if you believe that Jesus Christ was crucified for you, was unjustly tried and delivered to be crucified on your behalf, that you will now accept to be baptized, that your sins will be washed away, and then you cannot have peace with God. This is the essence of for which Jesus Christ has come to the earth. And as you do that, the blessings of the Lord will rest upon your life. Today, when you believe and are working with Jesus Christ, people will treat you. People will levy against you so many malicious things. They will say, accuse you forcefully, but stand firm and wait on the Lord. Stand by the truth. And don't indulge yourself in any evil of this world. And God, in his infinite mercy, will justify you, will vindicate you, and you will set you free. For this is how marvelous and wonderful our Lord can be there for us. This is the message for us to put in our heart and consumed and feed upon that we will live for our Lord Jesus Christ until he come back again. We will use this time to invite you to meet with us in our worship service 
Our worship starts by 9 o'clock at Church of Christ, meeting at number 5 over the street, opposite Zenith Bank at high level. As you come, your life will not remain the same. If you are not close to Makodi and you are outside of any of these local government or Benue State or beyond, you can call and we will direct you to the nearest Church of Christ to you. And there, you will find grace to enjoy your life with our Lord Jesus Christ. For we are there for you. Therefore, I will leave the church phone number with you for text messages, for call, and for home Bible studies. 070-1450-3686. Once again, 070-1450-3686. My name once again is Icha Innocent, an evangelist. Shall we pray? We thank you, our Lord and our God, for this wonderful opportunity. Father, we cannot do anything of our own except you are with us. We ask your blessing upon your word that have gone out this night. May you, O oh God, bless each and every one that have listened to your word and help them, O oh God, to find grace in your sight. That as we wait on the Lord until his second coming, we will not, O oh God, wait in vain but we we'll wait and enjoy his redemption with which oh god he will take the beloved ones to heaven and as many as have slept in your arms by the time he shall appear again that we will all resurrect to life eternal for you are the lord who is worthy to be praised and to be honored forever for we ask and pray in jesus name amen i'm in the way the bright and shining way I'm in the glory land way, telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. I'm in the glory land way. Heaven is nearer and the way groweth clearer for I'm in the 